Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be going over my Prepare 3D version 4 graphic settings. Uh, what's really cool about version 4 is they actually give you the opportunity to edit the settings uh, through the main menu here as opposed to having to be loaded into the sim. So opening that up, I'm going to first talk about what my actual setup is. So I'm running a GTX i7, oh that wasn't right, a GTX 1070 and an i7-4790K stock clocked at 4 gigahertz. Opening up the display settings, I leave X, FXAA on on, anti-aliasing on 4, because I find if I turn the anti-aliasing up anymore, what ends up happening is that I don't see a huge bump in actual visual quality, but the frame rates definitely do drop uh, significantly if you move the setting up, so be wary of that. Texture filtering I have on 16x because I've tested them all, um, and they haven't necessarily seen a huge dip or bump in frame rates, so I just leave it on 16x there. And texture resolution is kind of a GPU thing that doesn't really hinder CPU performance that much, so I just leave that on ultra. I leave VSync off and the target frame rate is 100, or unlimited, sorry. Now in the world options is gonna be mainly where you're gonna see the most bang for your buck performance in terms of the settings that you set in this window here. So level of detail radius is on ultra, tessellation factor is on high, mesh resolution is 5 meters. Um, since I'm running Orbex and some of the other high fidelity, high fidelity uh, simulation scenery stuff, uh, pretty much across the board, 5 meters is the recommended. Text resolution is 15 centimeters. And then in scenery objects, the only thing I've really changed here um, and brought down is this new thing. So Autogen draw distance has actually been added in with version 4 um, and I find high is absolutely adequate especially if you're running like a weather program like Active Sky or anything like that. It's definitely going to make for a very very difficult time if you're rendering more than what you can actually see outside the window. Uh, that's why I have the settings set as they are here. Uh, special effects are all on medium. You can set them higher but your frames uh, definitely will take your hit. In terms of water detail, I've turned that just straight off, to be quite honest. Um, I don't notice any huge problems in terms of frame rates if you turn it on a little bit, but definitely if you try to go like medium or ultra, you're going to notice the problems. In the lighting tab, I've kind of set up my own lighting setting here. So HDR is obviously on with brightness at 1.1, bloom at 0, and saturation at 1.2. Shadow quality, I leave it on medium, but sometimes, depending on the airport I'm flying in, I turn it up or down. Um, in terms of the actual casting and receiving section, everything receives, and th three at the top cast. The last tab that will actually affect performance mainly is the weather tab. Again, if you have a weather engine like Active Sky, chances are it's going to take care of the setting entirely for you, but I leave the cloud draw distance on 90 and the coverage on maximum. When you're done editing your settings, you can go ahead and click OK and go into the sim and start flying. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. If you didn't, the other button seems to do justice as well. Thank you.